Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Hey, I wanted to talk about the marvels of quartz accuracy when it comes to timekeeping. I'm just amazed at what I've been uh, contemplating lately. You see, uh, recently I bought some diver style watches that didn't cost me very much. So kind of cheap, I say inexpensive watches from Casio. I think they're pretty good quality. And I wanted to do some accuracy tests on these. Now these are, a couple of them are solar powered, but other than that, they don't have any bells and whistles. They are just analog watches with either a date or a day and date window at the three o'clock position. So simple stuff, but how accurate are they? So uh, Casio says they should be accurate to within 20 seconds a month. So maybe 20 seconds fast, maybe 20 seconds slow at the end of the month, but uh, they should stay within that range. So I thought, well, I'll test it. So uh, I started out by uh, setting them as closely as I could to being exactly right on with an atomic time source that I was using. So uh, in my experience, most quartz watches will run a little bit fast. So if I couldn't get them exactly accurate with the atomic time source I was using, I tried to get them uh, maybe within a quarter second slow because I figured they would uh, eventually catch up to the right time and keep getting a little bit ahead of themselves. But uh, none of them I, were set fast. So it's, it's either right on or within a quarter second, okay? This is why I thought it would be good to do a mid-month look at these and see how it's going so far. And the results are so good, it made me want to make this video to talk about how great quartz accuracy is uh, on these watches. So uh, the, the worst ones were uh, you know, somewhere between three and five seconds uh, wrong. Okay, so that's, if you double that to the, the full month, that would still be well within the range that uh, Casio said they were. But uh, five out of the 11 watches that I recently got were uh, about, about one and a half seconds or better as far as the accuracy goes. So by the end of the month, uh, we'll see what goes. I've decided to make the month 30 days long just to simplify the math on some of this. So I know most months are not 30 days long, but let's just say, you know, 30 days is a month for, for accuracy's sake on, on these specifications. So now, if they're wrong by 1%, what would happen? See, if, if you're taking a test, you're in school, and uh, you get one answer wrong out of 100, you score 99%, you would be a great student, maybe the best student in the school, if you were consistently getting just 1% wrong. But how would that work with timekeeping? I thought, well, how many seconds are there in a month? So you can check the math and make sure I'm right about this. But I figured that there are, again, 30-day month, 2,592,000 seconds a month. So if you were wrong by just 1%, how far wrong would you be? How many seconds uh, per, per month? What would, what would that add up to? And I did the math here, and I figured you would be wrong by 25,920 seconds which adds, uh, that, that, that translates to 432 minutes, which is seven hours and 12 minutes wrong. Now imagine I said, hey, let's, let's get together, have a meeting a month from now. And you said, fine, I'll be there within 1% of the right time. And you were late by seven hours and 12 minutes. How, how crazy would that be? So these quartz watches are far more accurate than 1%. So how accurate are they? Well, um, the way quartz works, and here's a, here's a piece of quartz, a very common mineral, okay? And that's why quartz, uh, it's easy to get quartz. It doesn't cost that much to get the mineral, and uh, you can make, you can use, utilize it in electronics uh, for, for pretty cheap. And it's good stuff, really good stuff for, for timekeeping. Not the best perfect stuff, but the, all things considered for the price, you cannot beat quartz. All right, so you put a little tiny piece of quartz inside a circuit and you make it oscillate at two to the 15th power times per second, or that would be 32,768 cycles per second. Okay, so you got something inside that circuit that is counting the cycles per second on this uh, quartz oscillation. And every time it reaches 32,768, it advances the time by one second, either with a digital display or with the analog hand. So that's, that's pretty sophisticated stuff. That's pretty cool. What if that were off by just one oscillation? What if in the amount of time it should be doing 32,768, it actually did 
32,769, throwing the entire thing off by one oscillation per second. What kind of accuracy would that be? Well, according to my math, that would be accurate to within 0.00305%. And, you know, that's a lot better than being 99% accurate. Okay, so, and, and, if, and if a quartz uh, circuit were that accurate, you know, just, just 0.003% wrong, that would throw the thing off by about 1 minute and 20 seconds per month. Now, Casio on these watches is saying they should be accurate to within 20 seconds a month. So that's better by a factor of four. Instead of 80 seconds wrong, it's only 20 seconds wrong. And in the case of my watches, it looks like it's going to be even better than that. But if it were 20 seconds off in a month, that would be an accuracy to within 0.00077 that astonishes me that that's the kind of results that they're that they're saying they can give and yet the results i'm seeing are going to be even better than that so um oh, oh by the way I, I know you're gonna ask this question if um if you've got a, a quartz circuit oscillating at thirty-two thousand seven hundred sixty-eight times per second okay genius in, in one month how many oscillations is that total well, according to my math, it's 84,934,656,000 oscillations per month in that quartz circuit using this brilliant, uh, well, it's actually a much smaller piece of quartz that you would have, you know, inside your watch or your clock. Oh, and also, okay, if it's accurate to within 20 seconds a month, that means that you're adding maybe one or taking away one oscillation that should be there or shouldn't be there, uh, you're off by one oscillation for every 131,072 oscillations that you should be counting. So I think that's, that's, again, pretty astonishing. Now, all due respect to people who love mechanical clocks and mechanical watches and automatic mechanicals and the Rolex watches and all the Swiss-made stuff, all due respect to you, but you just can't beat the accuracy of a quartz movement. I mean, maybe you get lucky with your mechanical movement, or maybe you've had it uh, fine-tuned somehow. You've managed to regulate that. But really, I mean, I, I kind of compare this to, do you have a horse and buggy, or do you have a car? The people who have a horse and buggy, they love it. There's something just elegant and wonderful about a horse and a buggy. There's something absolutely elegant and wonderful and impressive about the engineering that goes into a mechanical timepiece. No question about that. And I am amazed that people hundreds of years ago came up with basically the same mechanism, the same design that is in use today, the same principles at work. So, so hats off to those people. But just like having a horse today to do what most people would do with a car, it just makes so much sense for, for most people to have a car to get them and their stuff from one place to another. The maintenance, the ease, uh, just the hassle of having a horse and buggy compared to a car, there's just no comparison. So, so in, the, in the same sense, again, factoring in the elegance and the wonder of having uh, you know, a mechanical watch or a mechanical clock, you just can't beat the accuracy of quartz. And that's why I'm so excited to talk about quartz. So, uh, okay, so I'm halfway through my 30-day experiment to see how well these inexpensive new Casio watches that I just bought are, are working for accuracy's sake. And I will obviously follow up in a couple of weeks on this, but uh, maybe there's a chance I'll find something else to make a video about before then. So I hope you will make an appointment <laughs> to join me and don't be 1% late for the next episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.